And when it started, they didn't think that Donald Trump was going to be president. They, there was 18 guys and one woman on stage. They didn't know which way that was going to shake out. They were looking for any Republican dirt in Russia that could neutralize the issue. And I think the seminal moment, the day that will live in infamy when people step back 20 years in history, riding it from 30,000 feet, July 5th, 2016, because two amazing things happened that day. That's the day that James Comey walks out on the stage and says, I'm dropping the Hillary Clinton email case. Uh, I think she did terrible things, but we can't prove intent, and so we're closing it down. It's that very same day that Christopher Steele walks into an FBI office in London and says, here's my dossier on Donald Trump. And at that moment, whether by intent or by accident, the switching of the scandal begins. It's no longer Hillary Clinton's email scandal or the Clinton cash scandal. It's now Donald Trump has a Russia problem. And when I talk about deceit, and I'll just use one example that just again this week was in the news, and so it's very important. Um, this past week, Christopher Steele lost a judgment in, in um, Great Britain. A judge, justice in Great Britain, concluded that one of his memos uh, in the dossier, because there's 16 or 17 memos that make up the dossier, was so false, and he didn't do enough validation of it before he shared it with the FBI and other people that he's liable under British law. What is that memo about? Well, it's about a very debunked false story that more than 100 times the FBI said from the fall of 16 to today was never true. It was never true. But yet it was perpetrated time and again on major television networks, major news publications. It's the story of the Alpha Bank server. This idea perpetrated in multiple news stories um, at a time when the FBI had already concluded it wasn't true, yet there were leaks of this that somehow there were these pings between a server at Alpha Bank in Moscow and Donald Trump's tower, and therefore they're secretly having communications. And this is the place how they plotted the... The FBI dismissed that in October of 2016. And yet dozens upon dozens of times, I watched colleagues in my industry continue to report this was true and accurate and the, uh, the holy grail of the conspiracy. And as recently as a few weeks before Bob Mueller testified in Congress at the end of his report, it came up again. And finally, a congressman asked him in the, in the hearing, what about this Alpha Bank thing I don't want to talk about? Well, he finally got an answer. I don't believe it was true ever. How can the American media, how can the Democratic or liberal or intelligence or Republicans, whoever spread that story dozens of times, continue to perpetrate a story that was demonstrably proven to be false, that is this new era of decade of deceit. And when you, what you learn when you unravel the Russia investigation is we had an FBI agent, if you believe the inspector general's conclusions, who took a document that said that Carter Page was an asset of the CIA, and he changed it to hide the fact that he was working for the CIA. If the, if the FISA court ever knew Carter Page was working for the CIA, they wouldn't have been spying on him. When could we imagine our country's history an FBI lawyer would change a document to change the meaning of someone who, by the way, was helping our country? When would American news media continue to report a story that I know every time I call the FBI, they say, it's not true, don't go with that, we debunked it, here's a statement, we debunked it. They must have been talking to the same reporters that wrote that story, yet they continued to report that story. Institutions that we relied upon to tell us the truth, or at least admit what they knew and didn't know, and to stay out of politics, stay above it, are now in, in the swamp of politics, in the swamp of false information, misinformation. And that is the underlying concern I have when I come out of this book. It was sort of therapy for me, and I don't know about Seamus, but for me, I realized that these institutions that were key to democracy have now been dragged down into the era of politics where you know lying goes on in politics all the time. I think one of the famous sayings I learned the first time I came to Washington, show me a politician, I'll find you a liar. You know, uh, it, it's a joke. And so politics, yeah, there's always been deception uh, and manipulation. But there have been these institutions, the State Department, the FBI, the news media, where we've been above it. And this is the decade, that 2009, where they were sucked into the vortex. And I worry about the future of America as long as that dynamic goes on.